During their peak during the holiday season, LL Bean sells one of these every seven seconds. But I have not bought, shoot. During their peak holiday season, LL Bean sells a pair of these every seven seconds. I bought mine a year ago and still have not worn them. You may be asking yourself, why? Just wanted to give you a quick heads up that this is mainly a story video. So I will talk about the moccasins, but I am, this is a story instead. I hope that's okay. If it's not, I guess just another bad video from me. Okay, so first things first, back on our Friday schedule. Happy Friday. This was posted on Saturday, but give past Michael a chance. He was very excited that he thought he could do this. I hope your week went well. I hope you're gonna have a great weekend. Time to relax, make a cup of tea, and start sipping, my friend. Anyways, though, today we're talking about LL Bean Wicked Good Slippers. I am from New England, I say wicked, and some people have commented that I'm the literal embodiment of Massachusetts pride, so I figured I'd wear my Cape Cod sweater today because I love Cape Cod. Okay, so you see that? Those trees? I really like those trees, and I film them a lot because they remind me of home. Cape Cod, New England, obviously trees are everywhere, I'm not in Cape Cod, but they remind me of home and I have not felt like anywhere else is home ever. So I'm moving over there to New York City and this is a big deal because it's the first time in my life that I have ever not taken the easy route or the safe route or the second choice. It's just something that I always wanted to do and kind of always drag my feet on, which I will get into in a second. So for my whole life, I always feel like I've taken the short way or the easy way out. And I actually realized this in college at Fairfield University, which is not where I went to school. But one day I was visiting a friend and I was standing in the shower and I thought, this is a real college. And the college that I went to is just a little fake continuation of high school. I realized while standing buck naked in the shower at Fairfield that I consciously made sure that I wasn't gonna go in a situation where I didn't feel perfectly comfortable already. And I loved where I went to school. I loved Wheaton College. I made great friends and everything. But I just remember driving back to my school after being at Fairfield and I was just really sad and reluctant to go back because I was like, why did I do that? Hello? A quick phone call. I just went and bought grapes and I looked at the price and I was like $7. That seems kind of like a lot of money. And then I saw the tag and it said organic grapes. And I said, oh, these are organic grapes. $7 totally justified. But I didn't want to pay $7 because I'm moving. So I went to, what if every time I moved my hand I had two more? So I started looking throughout the supermarket for cheaper grapes. They could be on the floor, whatever. And then I found them tucked in the corner with all the other cheap fruit that aren't organic and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, much better. I took these product of USA grapes to the cash register and they were $2 a pound and this bag was three and a half pounds. So anyways though, that was the first realization that I did something very important in my life in the safest way possible because I didn't want to get uncomfortable. And then I feel like it's one thing to recognize that, it's a whole nother thing to act on it and I didn't act on it for, well, yet, I guess, is what I should say. Since I graduated school back in 2018, I said, I wanna to move to New York. Even when I got the job that allowed me to live in New York, I moved to New Jersey, which is fine, but it's right there. It's literally right there. It is the most, I love this view in Hoboken where you can see New York, but I hate going there because I'm like, that is, that is everything that I want and it's right there and I could, I'd probably drown, but I could really attempt to swim there and it's right there but I stopped here. So I always, always, in every single thing that I do, I always take the safe route. This isn't a metaphor, this is just a grape. Until now, now I'm leaving my comfort zone. I make enough money, it's not a big deal. But I have more to say. Goodbye, grapes.
So this is not my apartment, this is Christian's from Theo and Harris, and you can tell because he has a gun on the wall, just in case the red coats come back. I have to do some work here still, I have to film something, so uh, we'll do a little bit of it here. Okay, so now, my apartment. And, more importantly, these L.O. Bean Wicked Good Slippers. Like I said, I bought them a year ago, and I have not worn them once. The little cardboard thing is still in there. And the reason I haven't worn them once is because the whole goal of these was to put them on, come fall or winter, when I wanted to feel cozy and at home in my apartment. And I never did because I've been doing what I've been doing my whole life and just waiting for my life to start. For four years, since I graduated college, I've just been waiting for something to start. I didn't really do anything. I kind of just pulled furniture off the street, no matter the quality, and then put it in my room and then threw all my stuff into this little cube and slept there. So long story short, I've really done nothing or the bare minimum to make it my own or to feel like home. And I found out that I'm very all or nothing. Like I'll buy a thousand jackets, but if I have to buy a chair for 50 bucks, I'm like 50 bucks, are you kidding? That also kind of inhibits you, in my opinion, from like really being like, okay, this is, you know, this is it, this is life. I better start decorating and making sure it goes well. Okay, but real quick, uno momento, I'm actually still at work, so I have to I have to film something, and then I'll be right back. I promise, I'll even leave the camera on so you can see me doing this. I have to change my sweater though, this is not a very professional sweater. See, much more professional now, I'm in merino, much better than cotton. Then I toss on my running shoes, shorts, and hat, and Apple Watch, and I go for an embarrassingly short run, where six out of seven days, I feel like I may puke. I take Sundays off. Woo! Finally done. When I do a video like that where I have to speak, I, this should take me five minutes, but I re-say things like 60 to a thousand times, and that took me three hours to do five minute piece. Hey, it makes the money, am I right? Puts food on the table. Wow, literally. over in Walnut uh, Avenue School. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. But they won't even, <laughs> they won't even know what it's about. But... Have a good night. Oh, that lady was bananas. Okay, so do you remember Taylor? If you don't remember Taylor, you're probably new to this channel, but you'll figure out who she is by the way I talk about her. But Taylor is incredible at making any space feel like home. And she puts an incredible amount of work into doing that. For example, if we went to a hotel for one day, she would take both of our suitcases, take everything out, put them in drawers, organize everything, set up a little area in the bathroom, and then put our suitcases in the closet just so it feels a little bit more cozy. She also obviously did that with her apartment and just anywhere she touched literally got way cozier and way calmer. One time she saw this chair that she really liked in Brooklyn, like 15 blocks away from where she lived, and she just dragged it to her apartment. And I recently listened to this podcast by Stuff You Should Know about Feng Shui, about how painting and laying out a room and organizing things and plants and everything is really important for your general mood and how you feel, and it's so true because I would go to my place and just go to my room and close the door. And Taylor's place just felt like home and felt so calm and cozy, it felt great. And I'm not just saying that because of our history because everybody that walked into that apartment said wow this is beautiful Taylor very much decorated my life for the past two and a half years she put all my plants in the Sun and all my paintings in the shade and now that she's in Denmark and doing her thing we still talk all the time by the way she says hi she's doing great Denmark is awesome recently she fell off her bike but I did realize that I kind of need to check in with myself and also realize that it's just as good a time now as it will be in five years to start living my life. So, I am moving to Brooklyn by myself. And this time, I'm going to actually spend money on furniture and paint the walls and have plants, just things that make me feel pride around the house. And I'm going to really try and not solely focus just on career goals. And we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try and make life very saturated with you know, with it all. And when that's all said and done, and the paint is stuck, and everything is tucked away where it should be, I will break out these bean slippers and walk around my apartment, my home. Although Cape Cod is always gonna be my home. Just letting you know, mom, watching this. Also, I can't lie, I am a little bit sad to be leaving. Not really sure as to why. Just very, right now I feel like it's cozy but I don't think that's necessarily true most days. It is 1022, November 18th, 2021. There's a light drizzle outside, and this is the last review that I will be doing in this room. So these are L.L. Bean Wicked Good Slippers, the pride of Maine, and they are made of lamb, sheep, 
but lamb. The first, sure. In terms of sizing, basically everybody says size down or that these should fit snug around your foot because you'll pack down the sheepskin as you walk and stuff like that. I went regular size just because I like to put wool socks on, so I figured I could use the extra room. Usually, my idea about how you should actually size something that goes against what the manufacturer says, incorrect. So you should probably get them snug and go from there. What I don't really like about these slippers is the fact that the bottom is sheepskin still. That's great, but what I don't like is that it's not a removable sheepskin insole. You can get removable sheepskin insoles for your L.L. Bean boots from L.L. Bean, but not for these. These are sewn on, and I think it'd be really nice and add a lot of life to the moccasins if after you wore down the bottom, you could get another sheepskin insole, put it on top. But yeah, these slippers, I feel like if you've, well, I don't know how popular they are anywhere outside of New England, but in New England, anybody's house you go into will probably have one disgusting pair of these slippers that people like crush the heel on because they didn't put the heel up correctly. They walk down, they're like black, there's holes in them. Classic, classic wicked good slippers. Anyways though, super short review, these slippers or moccasins are the most infamous slippers or moccasins really in the world. They're not made in the U.S. anymore, I don't believe. It says on Ello Bean's website that they are imported. The fur is from Australia, but I am from New England, Massachusetts to be specific, and everybody in my family has a pair of Ello Bean slippers of some sort. So if you're anything like me, these are the pinnacle of cozy houseware. And if you think of Ello Bean slippers, you probably associate a family member with them. For me, it's my dad falling asleep on the couch with his on. So they're perfect, super cozy, about as cozy as you can get. And that's it for this apartment. 917 Clinton Street, you have been great. I enjoyed making reviews inside of you, but now it's time to say goodnight.